Clark, Here. David, Here. Fish, Here. Jorgensen, Here. Cole, Here. Parler Parliament. <laughs> And Mayor Heinitz. Do I have to start all over? No. Oh, shoot. It's having some. <laughs> uh, motion carries. Uh, in front of you, you have the claims, pages 23 to 25. If there's any questions on anything there. We have a motion to approve the claims as listed. Any questions anyone might have? None. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Consent calendar, Brian, anything? No. Okay. At this point in time, we uh, offer visitors a chance to uh, communicate to the council. Uh, if you have an item that's already on the agenda, we would ask you to wait until that agenda item comes forward. But if there's anyone that would like to address the council at this point, uh, please approach the mic and sign in or uh, push the button. Good evening. Um, Dave Ellison, 1102 North Chestnut. Um, I'd like to thank the mayor and the council for the special meeting and addressing the annexation uh, uh, position and um, hope this uh, kind of resolves this for quite some time. Thank you. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to. Uh, I think we have a public hearing. Our variance. No hearing, but we have an appeal for appeal a variance, variance denial, denial. At 2820 East Augusta Circle. Correct. Uh, the property owner at 20, 2820 East Augusta Circle constructed an accessory building uh, without a permit within a five foot rear yard setback on, in, on and existing utility easement on his property. All three of those items are not allowed. Uh, the property owner appeared before the Board of Adjustment um, to appeal or ask for a variance that request was denied. You've got all of the information, the minutes, um, and all the information that was given to the Board of Adjustment uh, in your packet. I don't believe the young man is here, is he? Or oh, he is, okay, there he is, come on up. Hello. So Wait, yeah. You, your name, um, please. Huh? Aaron David. Goodell. <clears throat> so I met, as he said, with the zoning. Um, we went over it. Um, where I came from, I didn't know I needed a permit for a kennel. So that was my mistake. I admitted it. I apologized. I got with Paul on it. I began to go through the proper steps that we needed to get the permit. Once we seen where it was setting, I then went through the steps again to meet with the zoning committee. Um, <clears throat> in my lot, there's three lots that are affected by this. My lot, the rest of them are flat. My lot is completely different. As you can, I don't know if you guys have the pictures that I sent in to Paul. Um, I tried to do the best I could to lay it out with tape measures and flags and everything so you could see. Um, there's also another easement that runs down the side of it. Um, so I tried to do the best I could to lay it out for you guys. Um, with, on my property, it's very unique. Um, it's not flat anywhere in the whole property. 
the flattest place that I could find is where the building is sitting now. <clears throat> and once Paul told me that um, I needed a permit, of course I stopped everything, so I have not touched the building, I have not done anything. The other thing is, is this building is not attached to the ground in any way. Um, if in the foreseeable future that it did need to be moved or demolished or anything. I also talked with Paul. As my property is, there's actually a couple of pieces of paper that I signed for my driveway and other things that are also in the easement that I would say that I would sign also that if for some reason it needed to be demolished and or moved, I would do so at my own expense. No problem, no questions, no anything. Or if it needed to be demolished in an emergency situation, again, I would clean it up or do whatever I needed to do at my own expense. <clears throat> Aaron, I appreciate your um, willingness to do all of that. Our issue always is on these things is if we start with one person, we're setting precedent. I, I, un that's, I understand that's that. The, that's the issue, and I apologize for no. that. That's just the way it is. Yep, um, no, I, un I understand that, and like, I'm not trying to start a president, you know, I'm just trying to take care of my dogs the best I can, so. <clears throat> it's a really nice looking kennel. Yeah, yeah, um, I, 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 yeah, I worked pretty hard on it, so. I did um, listen to the P&Z meeting, and one thing that stood out to me that, that um, I thought was, was problematic for you as well as for the city was with it being on the, um, the easement there and, and there was talk about if there was an emergency they have to come in and um, you know kind of no commitment to what kind of shape that's going to be in but I would also be concerned about your dogs you know if they had right. to come in there in an emergency the, so my wife works from home she, she's home every day so if there was an emergency she could go out and get my dogs I mean so they could be removed she works from home every day <clears throat> and if I can ask staff wasn't there also um discussion at that meeting or Tim would know the proposed bike path was an issue is that correct right along with this easement there's also a trail easement that goes through there so if council decided to ever in the future put that trail system in that's where it would go uh, Tammy this is Jack uh, I, I could not hear you at all could you try that again? Along with that utility easement, there's also a, a path easement. So once council would decide to put in that trail system in the future, then that's the location that it would go to. Is there an area on your on your property that, uh, I mean, it looks like a fairly large kennel. I, I, I see that. Yeah. Is there another area that would be doable, permissible? No, sir, not not really. Not to your not 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 really. That's that's why I kind of picked that spot. It was literally the flattest spot and where it's sitting now it's actually ten inches out of level where it's sitting right now. And it's that's the flattest spot that I could find. And like I said, it's not attached to the ground. It sets on posts, it sets on top of the ground. I can see that. So Tim, do you have any comments as chair of PNZ? <clears throat> um, I guess on this one, I would tend to side with the Planning and Zoning Commission on this. It is, you know, I've sat through a lot of variance hearings. Um, to prove a hardship is very difficult. Um, grade and slope, um, does not make it unique. Um, one of our planning and zoning members is also a builder. Um, they had to bring in like six feet of fill on a walkout lot to make it, you know, walkoutable. Otherwise, he said it was a jump out lot instead of a walkout lot. So um, it, it's not really variance worthy. Also, we just it is not a good idea to build in any sort of utility easement a fence a kennel uh, anything because yes if there's an emergency they'll come in and just demolish 
whatever is there. We have it's very clear in our ordinance that if you are in an easement, um, whether it's the city, whether it's another utility that wants that has to have access to that easement, um, whatever's there will be taken out at the owner's expense. So um, I don't see a reason to overturn what the Planning and Zoning Commission did. Thank you, Tim. I have a quick question. Then how, Tim, with this, how long does he have then to move it with winter? I mean, with winter. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I talked to Paul after or during the meeting with the Board of Adjustment. You know, June, June 1st, it's winter time now, so now would not be a great time to be moving a building around or bringing fill in or, or whatever to, to make it level. So, you know, sometime next next spring would be the appropriate time. Any other questions that anyone has? Is there, uh, uh, was, from P and D standpoint, was there any other reason besides uh, the fact that he didn't apply for a permit and that was in the easement that uh, the uh, variance was denied? The, the variance was denied because there was not a hardship demonstrated. In order to grant a variance, there has to be a hardship or something unique about the property. And at this point in time, the plan, Board of Adjustment did not find that to be met. There are other options as to where to move the, the building. It may require additional fill or pilings or something to, to make it level, but it's still a feasible alternative to building in the easement. So no hardship was demonstrated. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alyssa Teeley, 200 Maureen Drive. I'm also on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, we did deny the variance request because, as you heard, the applicant did not demonstrate any hardship. He said uh, tonight he doesn't really have a better place on his yard to move that um, structure, but we think that he does. He mentioned that he has some underground sprinkler system, but our city law says that a hardship cannot be something you caused your own self. We have to follow the law. And uh, Yes, if there is an emergency, they, the, in the easement, they can demolish or move his structure, but that takes time. In an emergency situation, time is always very important. And so those are the reasons that we denied his request and that we recommend to you that you also uh, uh, a, a vote C that what's the word I'm looking for a agree yeah different I was looking for a different word but you get the idea yeah yeah thank you Elizabeth. yeah you so at, at this point unless there's any other questions uh, I would entertain a motion I assume Brian to either approve or deny We have a motion and a second to deny the appeal of the variance. Other comments, questions anyone might have? Hearing none, uh, take a, we'll vote. All those in, in uh, do you want to do a roll call? That's fine. This is to deny the request. Deny the appeal. Deny the appeal. Clark? David? Aye. Fish? Aye. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. Six Aye. zero. But he does have till June 1st, right? Yeah, we'll, okay. I'll, I'll get together with Paul, but I don't anticipate anything needing to happen until winter is done. Done with, okay, good. Wish you well, Aaron. Right. Oh, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Okay. Moving on to old business. We have a second reading of ordinance number 652, amending all street parking. This would uh, 
allow driveways up to 40 foot in width. Right at the moment, it's 40 feet or half the lot width, which is, which is ever, whichever is less. And then that measurement would be taken at the um, sidewalk instead of the property line. A motion and a second to approve the second reading of Ordinance 652 amending off street parking. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is the Ironwood Extension Project, which we've been visiting about. Um, <coughs> Brian, you want to go through what you've done? Yeah, I, I just consolidated uh, the information from DGR into a spreadsheet that was a little bit larger, a little bit larger, a little bit larger font. Um, you know, the, the owner, the property owners are listed there over on the left. Uh, and the original is what's contained in the preliminary assessment report and schedule. Option one was including portion of Aspen Park. Option two would take that portion of Aspen Park up to what is currently a, a improved. Uh, the, the south half would be included and then option three would include the entirety of Aspen Park in determining the city's share of those assessment costs. Um, the original project the city would uh, pay for 805,000 of the anticipated 1.8 million. Uh, option one, uh, the south portion of the park, uh, that would increase to uh, almost 1.2 million. Option two, which is the unimproved portion of the park would increase that to 1.26, and then uh, if the whole park was included, the city share would be 1.4 million. So, just a summary of no, some easier to read. That's good. I, I and that's what we asked you to do is to look at this from a standpoint of stronger city city uh, input. And I, I think that you've done done well with that. Appreciate that. Uh, again, I I believe that this is a project that we we need to we need to get done. I think an entrance into that park benefits the city a great deal. It's hard for me to know whether you know there's five or six property owners whether or not they're going to benefit from this. Um, you know, will have to be determined at some point, I guess. And, uh, um, but I, I do believe that this is a project that needs to move forward. Um, I have a question. Can, I know I think we talked about this on Thursday. Um, can this be, I know we need another second park entrance, but can this be delayed? I mean, what's the rush of? There's, there's no emergency here. Um, you know, it can certainly be delayed for a little bit. I, you know, I don't think we would want to delay it you know, more than a year or two in anticipation of, you know, soccer and hockey have anticipation or plans to start construction in the next couple of years. Um, I think that would be a driving force that we would want this second entrance into Aspen Park prior to those facilities being constructed. But you do, it, it's not an emergency. You know, there's, there's nothing changing with the operation of the parks right at the moment. Yes, there are some issues when there's severe weather and there's tournaments and the park is full, um, getting people in and out. But that's been that way forever. Sure. Great. How do others feel about postponing this, Tim? So, in our um, in our CIP that we did, did we include this project? And if we did, do we remember how much we included for it? I believe I included 100000 for the city cost per year. Uh, are you talking about total? Total. 1.4. 1.4. 1.4. What's total cost? That was total cost or that was the city portion? No. We didn't know. That was right. We didn't know. We didn't know. But we budgeted 1.4. Mm -hmm. And now we're anticipating a cost of one point. Correct. Which always scares me. If the city share was 1.4. Yeah, the oh, the city 1. share was 1.4. No, no. Total, total cost, cost of the project was, was 1.4 at the time we did the CIP because we didn't have the breakdown of, 
of city share versus assessable cost. So and now the project is 1.8, and we're seeing that trend with all of the projects. And, I know. And we'll have a little discussion about project costs or bids that we see coming in at the next council meeting just to scare you a little bit. And that's what scares me about delaying this. If it's 1.4 a year ago and it's 1.8 this year, what's it going to be? And, and again, it may it may put even more burden on individual that live in that area if we wait longer and longer and longer. So, I mean, it's a catch-22 a little bit. I, I don't have a great answer. Again, I'm, I'm... The hard part for me is to, to know... And I, I would, you know, like to know the impact it's going to have on the, on the landowners in that area. Will they be benefiting from it or not benefiting from it? If they're not, I understand, you know, at some point we will uh, have to deal with that. But uh, obviously there's got to be benefit to others than just the city. And who makes that determina term determination of, of whether or not does. there's value? The council gain. does. Council um, does? You know, it's, uh, it's something we've talked about a little bit. In other jurisdictions, I'm not sure it's done quite a lot. Um, you know, attempts to get a, a pre-appraisal done. I, I've seen that done by some jurisdictions. You know, I, I, I don't know what that would come out to be or, or who would even be willing to do it, but we could certainly reach out to some appraisers in the area and see if they've, A, done them, and B, if they'd be willing to, to do it here. At least it would give us a, an estimated increase in property value. I mean, because we... I will, I, I'm all. I just want to be fair to the to the landowners. We we have to make sure that they're benefiting from this in terms of if we're going to assess them. Is my thinking correct? And that's required by law. I do have a question with the assessment. How come, if I'm reading this right, we don't own the land that the road is going to be on that we're assessing these individuals for? Correct. Why are they getting charged for that? I know it says total cost of the road, but shouldn't we own that land first and then take that out of the assessment? No, anytime you do a project, you look at total costs, including acquisition costs, construction costs, engineering costs. Any costs associated with that project needs to be considered with, with the assessments. So that land acquisition cost, if in fact we need to pay for it, would be considered an eligible cost. And that is included in the 1.8 bid, bid, right? I would be in favor of having those assessments done personally for fairness. And then my second question is, if we did assume Aspen Park, where would the other 400,000 come from that we didn't budget? Well, we will need to have that conversation. Um, you know, we either borrow additional funds to cover that cost or uh, you know, we, we're not quite at year end yet, but, you know, that always popular fund balance um, to take a look. And that would certainly have some, potentially have some ripple effects on some projects further down the road. But don't we ha didn't we have 1.4 in the budget and based on this option three, we we'll, we would be at 1.48? Well, you know, it was the project cost, total project cost, not just the city share, but the total cost of construction was 1.4 million in the CIP. The cost estimate now is 1.8. Right, but we're, but we're going to spend 1.4. No, we're going to spend 1.8 to build it. Right. We would assume 1.4 of the cost. Right. So 400,000 would be. So when we did projections and looking at debt service, we based it on a $1.4 million bond instead of a 1.8. So there's an, an additional $400,000 that has to come from either debt or fund balance. Because we wouldn't get the assessments all up front. Correct. Well, assuming we would. <clears throat> yeah. So what, what do we know we're building this year? The core? Yes. The, we're in the core, the retaining wall at the golf course. Okay. Um, big Sioux. Big Sioux drainage. Big Sioux drainage. Water treatment plant. Water treatment plant. The water treatment plant's coming out of the water fund, though. Correct. West side trunk. Um, that's coming out of the sewer fund. Yep. I mean, I guess I would be I would be in favor. I, I would like to go and review our CIP list before we um, start spending more money, especially since project costs seem to be going up. 
I I would kind of agree with Tim on that. I just feel like this project, yes, I understand it. It's, it'd be nice, but we've been dealing with one entrance in that park for how long? I, I think not only we could delay it, but if it's going to go up that much, it I don't know. I I just feel like we owe it to the landowners to give a little more heads up than otherwise. Oh, here we go. We're going to assess you this big chunk of money. Um, plus, though, if we have a lot of other projects on there, it'd be nice to kind of figure out, prioritize. You know, we have a number of the landowners here, and I'd kind of like to to hear from them. We've got some with developed property. We've got others with property that they want to develop in the future. I'm not sure what the timelines uh, people are looking at, and I would be kind of curious as to, to hear some of that. Okay. If anybody wants to talk about it. Again, I'm Mike Coughlin with, uh, I guess, the owner of Copo. And, uh, you know, after living here for 42 years, you know, I've seen a lot of different things coming up. I see Brandon right now as we're really struggling with infrastructure costs, which is really hurting Brandon in itself. And in my estimation, and I don't know if it's even possible, is there any way that we can do some sort of bond in the city of Brandon, vote on, and pass all of these costs on to the, the people that live in Brandon? We're talking corridor streets where uh, Redwood, Chestnut, Ironwood, uh, Park Street, Maple, uh, the core area of Brandon, the uh, interstate exchange, uh, continuation of uh, maybe taking out Old Sioux and rebuilding that. Um, you know, this should be, all of these projects benefit everybody that lives in Brandon. You know, not a one of us, except barring myself maybe, because I do own Coval, uh, for future development. You know, we, if we had Park Street, Maple, we probably wouldn't need the access on Ironwood. But again, that's a five, ten years down the road. Uh, basically, these properties cannot be developed, uh, which I think it ties into Justin's development. It's like we have a hole in the middle of the city that's not being developed. All these tax dollars that could be generated by building uh, would help the city in some regards. But like I say, it all depends on roads and you're holding back. Um, well, there's 50 acres there, so approximately, you know, 100, 150 homes or businesses or commercial areas that could really benefit the city of Brandon in the future. So I, I would, to me, it's like we, we should consider some way, and I've talked to many people, it's like, I don't even know what it would take to add on to your tax dollars for the next 10 years. You know, does a hundred bucks a year for everybody? You know, Brandon's a pretty well-to-do community. You know, nice homes, there's a few people maybe can't pay that much. Um, in my particular case with Koval, I expect to pay a fair share, you know, for the future development. Several of them in here, it's not going to benefit them one one ounce, you know. It's it's just going to bring more traffic to them, uh, past their house. But on the other hand, uh, this road is needed for Aspen Park. It's a vital part of Brandon. We have people coming in from from Brandon to the ball complex from everywhere, and they're seeing Brandon. And if we're lacking these roads, you know, that, and especially access, I think Brandon should be very proud of what they have and continue to build on that. But uh, I'm just suggesting, you know, if there's any way possible, it might take a little delay on Ironwood. I think we need to get it done as fast as we can. Somehow pass some of these corridor projects onto the, the residents of Brandon, and that includes everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.
Ryan, is that possible? I mean, is that something like Mike talked about, like a a bond for some of all these roads, or? Well, the core, the core, the Rushmore area reconstruction are being funded out of the general fund. Okay. We are doing no special assessments on reconstruction projects. We've typically we've only done special assessments on new construction. So, in essence, all of the all of the reconstruction projects are getting paid by everybody in the city. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? I forgot one comment I forgot to make, you know, if we get caught up on these roads, which we've been behind, you know, the last 10, 12 years for sure, uh, you know, the people of Brandon help pay for those, you know, all the extra funding, we could build uh, the parks, hockey, baseball, water treatment plant, sewer, police station, maintenance, city hall, golf course, all of those funds could go to much needed projects, but if, if you look at Brand, I mean, for the next 10 years, what are we going to do? We're going to build roads at the city's, uh, you know, at a, at a budget that we can't afford. So it's like, to me, it's like, just bite the bullet and put it in our taxes and let everybody pay for it. And get, get Brand and rolling again where it used to be. Anyone else? Um, I will say just one thing to that. And the last time we tried to pass a bond issue for the city of Brandon was for Aspen Park, right? Correct. And it failed by what percentage? Do I really need to say it? Out loud, please. It was, it was 94 to 6. <laughs> so we'd love to pass a bond. But you got to remember that, that was, was for baseball pretty much only. Yeah. How many people play baseball in Brandon or are involved in the baseball? But it still gets back to the water treatment plant is being paid for all of the residents who have a water connection in town through their rates. The sewer improvements are all being paid by the users of the sewer system. All of the reconstruction projects are being paid by everybody in town through sales tax revenue bonds and general property taxes. The only time we're using special assessments again is when we construct a new road. The courts have ruled that assessing existing infrastructure or reconstruction of existing infrastructure is virtually impossible in the state of South Dakota. So we are not special assessing these reconstruction projects. Those are being paid out of general fund tax dollars. I really believe Tim might be on the right track with us looking a little bit more at our capital improvement plan. I'd hate to see even this get done at the, uh, you know, in, in some of the projects that we are already started on be put to the side. I don't think that's quite where we want to go with this either. I do believe it's important to have. But I do believe we, we should take some time to look at our, our CIP before we make any kind of a commitment to the project. Justin Oakland, 213 West Holly Boulevard, Suite D. D is in dog. So I saw that was not quite corrected yet, um, which is okay. Anyway, um, there's two ways to build a road, publicly and privately. So currently this is the public way, right? Um, or you can build it privately. So privately would be Mr. Coughlin needs access to his Coval development. Peterson family needs access to their development. They'd come to the city, say they want a road. The city would say, hire your own engineer, build your own road, right? Pay for it. And then they'd say, well, how do my neighbors pay for this? Well, you go assess them. Well, that's hard to do, isn't it? That's what we're here talking about. It's hard to assess people. So it's my opinion that this is actually done fairly well. Um, we talked last meeting about the short notice and the time frame to work on this. I've worked on it pretty hard this weekend. Um, I think we've come a long ways on the design schedule. I think we're almost done. I think we need to proceed with what we're doing here, Mayor. I think this needs to go through to show how this goes publicly. Uh, we could get bids back if we shape up this plan that you have here. We could get bids back for under $1.4 million. The city could then pay for the whole project or help reduce the burden on some of the homeowners who aren't necessarily benefiting. Uh, not to throw a Coughlin under the bus, but he's getting a heck of a deal here. The city's helping pay. The park is bringing every taxpayer into this. So the city is helping pay for that road to Coval. That's, the city is helping pay for the road to Peterson Ground. Um, 
do I benefit from this? I think I have a pretty good argument. I think I presented what I would argue to you here in, in full color. Um, I think it sums up who the property owners are a little bit better. It just kind of does what Brian did. I liked what he did there with the options. Um, obviously, Brian and I have talked at his informational meeting. We'll leave the math up to the engineers. But if we could find some ways to maybe cut some fluff out of this proposal, maybe cut one of the sidewalks off. Maybe we don't need fabric underneath 12 inches of gravel down on top of gravel, right? Um, so we can cut some gravel out of this thing. We can definitely maybe look at some of the engineering fees. Um, we can t take a look at cutting one of the 10 foot wide, six inch thick sidewalks out of the deal. Uh, hopefully excavation would come in a little bit lower. Mobilization always kills me. Uh, you can ask all my contractors. I, I don't understand how it costs $150,000 to move your stuff out to Brandon to work, but apparently it, semis are expensive. Um, so there's some things in here I think that could be looked at and I want, I guess what I'm saying is I want you to move forward. We've come this far, finish the design, put it out to bid when it comes back for bid and maybe it's a million four, maybe it's two million. We won't know till we put it out to bid and then we'll know what it costs to build a road publicly. And at that time we can say, Hey, Mr. Koval, uh, the Petersons, you build it privately but we haven't had time here to look at the private side of it because we just got hit with this the end of November, but we've come that far. Let's, let's not stop this. Let's finish this. Let's see what we're getting here. Let's see the numbers. And then at that point, you guys can award the bid or not. You can say, no, it's way too high. We're not voting to accept any of these bids or, hey, we're, that came in great. We're accepting the low bid. Um, again, I think this is done fairly well, uh, fairly quick. I'm impressed actually. So I wouldn't quit now. I have a question though, Justin, you, this is all your land too though, right? Correct. Here, yep. And you're going to plan to develop that. Yep. That's so I, I think you would have, well, at least the residents of their homes, because I, they would use this road to get to Ironwood, would they not? I don't know if anyone will ever build that or be forced to build that. Uh, this that, little section here. Right. That's out, that's out the of my city control. Do that? That would no, be the Peterson land developer, whether that's the Petersons, whether... So you all know. your homes would still go out in Evergreen? Yeah, I have five other access, not Evergreen, no. I have five other access, or four other access points aside from Evergreen or Ironwood. Okay. Um, and so that, that becomes a little dicey too, that now you're basically assessing your future potential clients or your future potential homeowners that are going to buy those homes from me. You're saying, hey, you're going to for sure drive on Ironwood and we're going to tax you, right? No, we're, I'm not saying that. Well, I'm that's it. To that. bring those in, that's how I feel about it. Oh. To bring those, that chunk of that land into the equation. I think that's already serviced by my own, my own land under my own roads with my own fire hydrants, my own street lights. I have no benefit. I have not enough land currently to hook to Ironwood. I need 66 feet. I have 55 feet. So therefore, my argument is I have one 55-foot wide lot that needs a driveway off of Ironwood. And I think uh, with everything I've put together in this short month, I think I have a pretty good case. You know, worst case, I pay you $50,000 in Plan C. So really, I'm here to fight about $50,000. Again, I think Koval's getting a steal at one hundred and fifty. dollars uh, Petersons are getting a steal at 78000 the other three homeowners really isn't that bad. I think there's some room to prove their point or prove what this does to their property. They probably have pretty good arguments as well. And then I think I have a pretty good argument. Um, I think the city paying for the entire park, Plan C, is the right thing to do. That does do what Mike wants. That brings every taxpayer into this. And so, again, done fairly well. I think the, the numbers could be fixed or the, some fluff taken out of the road, and this could be done differently or more well enough to get it done. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of, not for you, but I have a couple of questions. So this Ironwood, if we build it, are we building it as an arterial street? No, it won't be built to those standards, but it will be built to Um, and the city typically, if, if it's anything above a local street, we end up paying for the upsizing, right? Correct. 
So we would be paying for that third lane. Even if this were undeveloped land on both sides, we would pay for the turn lane. But if it was undeveloped land on both sides, the street would be accessed to the people who are building or developing the land on both sides. Yes. And yes, Vicki, unfortunately, the amount of land that Justin owns is not wide enough for a street to access the rest of his development. The only way he benefits from Ironwood is if a street is built to his property. On the other side, of, like Peterson's? No, through. Between, yeah. Could one go between Peterson's and the city then? If it's they it's actually, them? it's designed it's to go... The plan. Yeah. If we ever can. Though. Right, yeah. so what, he, what he's benefiting from is a driveway off of Ironwood to a really big house lot. Really deep house lot, yes. Deep, very deep like house little, lot. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, where I'd struggle with this, I guess, is that typically when you build a brand new street, it's because it's a brand new development, and so it's a brand new area. So then uh, the assessments are done, but they're not, they're done to the developers, and the costs are kind of passed through to the lots, and so the people who buy the lots end up paying for those assessments, but they don't know they did. Right. When you have people who already own a house on, on a lot and then you assess them, well, it's really hard to show that same benefit as it would be to a street that accesses undeveloped land that now is going to be developed, now is going to have city streets and all the other stuff. So I, I do, it, this one's hard because I, I think that there are a few landowners that, that shouldn't be a part of it. I don't know. The good news, yeah. Tim, is you guys are the assessment board. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you're in a very powerful or very unique situation. I think some of the Redwood attorneys spoke to that, that this is a very big power that the city has. You guys are everything here tonight. You're the owner of the park. You're the developer. You're the, you're the judge and jury here tonight. You're the assessment board in the future. Um, and again, I've looked into all that, and I, this is done fairly well. Uh, and to my 66 foot Tim's talking about, I didn't just extend my road for fun, hoping to hook to Ironwood someday. I did that because you guys are future, or excuse me, past councils uh, require that kind of stuff. That's a design feature to, to benefit the future of the city someday that, hey, we're not just gonna dead end that development. It's gonna continue through. There's gonna be connectivity with sidewalks, with traffic, with emergency management. You know, do I benefit from it? No, I have four other access points. You, the park owners, have one other access point. So I, I have four, I have enough. Um, again, I have one really deep 55 foot wide lot is, is what I think, so thank you. So Tammy, on the, um, the wider sidewalks for the shared use path, we pay that upcharge. We do, yep. And I think that that's, that's an important feature for our town to continue doing because before we've shorted ourselves on sidewalks? Yes. I would just maybe mention to the council that, you know, one of the things that you look at is the reasonable expectation of future uses for the land. So I think you can look at the land and say, is this gonna get developed? Because that, if so, that's a, if, a reasonable expectation of that land and the assessment might be for that landowner because the reasonable expectation is that developed but maybe one of the other parcels there's no reasonable expectation of development and you don't assess the same amount so what I'm trying to say is you know the um, Buheims have all this land what's the reasonable expectation that all that gets developed if you decide it's never going to get developed doesn't mean you have to assess them the same as the Peterson or the Koval. So you can look at, you have to set the assessment fair to the special benefit for that land. And, what, and I'm okay with that, but what, how do you base that? I mean, what do you base that on? You just can't pull it out of the air. Well, that's, that's well, why I'm totally yeah. in favor of us doing, having a real estate appraiser come in and give us some guidance. And I think part of that is you, you hear from a couple people here that we are planning on developing that area. You might hear from a couple of the property owners, we will never, and then you have to decide, is that credible, is that not credible? Well, it's more likely than not that this person is actually gonna develop this section. Um, that's for your decision to make. You know, how much land is out there? Is it 
reasonable that that person's never going to develop that. I mean, you're going to make those decisions as the, the council. Kathy Buheim, 1512 South Sioux Boulevard. Um, I have a lot of the same points that others have made here this evening, um, so I won't get into all of them, but I do believe that this should be on hold. This road does not need to be pushed through, and I'm wondering why would we push the road through before the park development has been made? So 2019, we went to a ton of master plan meetings for the park. The park has not expanded yet. We would be building this road to nowhere right now. Um, it's not that we are against the road. I think that I th want to make sure that I um, clarify that. Last time when I was at the podium, I said as it was proposed. So I just, my husband and I do believe that the road is a good thing. It's just that it's being forced upon us right now, and those assessments are still really, really high, still after those um, recalculations. I do disagree with uh, Mr. Oakland. Um, I do think that his property will benefit from it. We've all seen the plans. Um, if that goes through to Ironwood, as his proposal is, this road would go through Peterson's property. If you live in this, this property right here that he has proposed, and you're going to have to exit all the way here, that's not really viable for those homeowners. We know that all of this traffic out of this development will come down that new road um, if, that gets ex if that gets extended to Ironwood, and it'll be on us property owners. And I want to reiterate property owners. Three of us are homeowners there, three out of the six folks that are being assessed here, uh, seven now with the city. But I just want to, this is a really good visual of what that property development is looking like. This is the Peterson property, and this is our property here on the corner. Um, I have I a just, quick question for yes, you, Kathy. Uh, now, you have two parcels that would be assessed, correct? Correct. Is one of them developable, or is it just a part of your house? And In our eyes, it's, we are not having any intentions of developing our property. I mean, we are both small town kids. We grew up on small hobby farms. We wanted the space. We wanted no neighbors. Um, we're, we have that right now with that. The, the folks that are, you know, further down the road, um, Mr. Coughlin and Mr. Oakland, they have developments planned and in the works. Um, I really would appreciate, um, as he was talking about, taking some of the fluff out. There are some things I believe that are in the budget and those line items that could be cost saving measures. Um, right now, just a couple of those would be um, the need for the sidewalks on both sides. Um, the access point. If Petersons are not going to be developing that road, why would we have that in the plan to make a huge intersection at that level of that cost? And why would that be assessed to all six or seven of us when that's going to benefit Peterson and Oakland eventually? Um, these new options that came through, if I was Justin, I would be ecstatic about it also. His got reduced by 70%, 71.86% on option three. Um, mine was only changed at 43% for my home and 56%. So I'm going to go back to the question I emailed um, on December 16th. I requested a specific formula for the allocations on this project or an equation, A plus B equals C or minus whatever out of these projects. I think each homeowner would appreciate um, an itemized list. And I know these are just cost estimates at this time, but I think that that would really help us in layman's terms. This is not what I do every day like Justin, um, but I do think that, that there is some benefit to us property owners. Um, Kathy, are you asking about how the assessment was figured? Or yes, because these new numbers here, like I said, yeah. that we all are at different um, reductions for option one, two, and three, and they're all different all the way across. So by percentage rates, it just doesn't. Okay. I would appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Kathy, could you describe just so they have, understand um, 
Is your house on which lot, as Brian's? Is it is on lot one? Lot one. And then what do you have anything on lot six? Do you have a pole barn? Do you have anything? Nothing. It's vacant land. Mm -hmm. When we first moved to town and purchased the property, our intention was to build a house for ourselves on the additional land. We were not um, approved for a uh, curb cut onto Sioux. And then the other um, item we were told is depending on where our placement was for the home that we would have to have a paved driveway, um, a paved driveway to an easement that is there right now to gravel. So we have postponed our home um, building, obviously, and we're staying where we're at. So looking at this then, Brian, Stark and Drexler, I mean, obviously, what you see is that's what it's ever there's not going to be anything any development done possibly i mean and it looks to me like on kathy is it possible it's possible but on the other two i think i don't see anything right highly unlikely never you know never say never but highly no unlikely. I, I hear you their homes are kind of right in the middle of their property where they can't i mean you really can't so yeah put any well, got a pull schedule, you know, to pull another home. yeah it would more than likely require somebody, if somebody purchased the land, they would have to raise all the property sure. to sure. do any sort of development. And yeah. They'd have to do what? Ra raise. It's a fancy yeah. term yeah. for tear down. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Didn't know what that meant. You're welcome. Well, I think, thank, thank you, Kathy. I think we, you know, again, I think this comes down to two issues. One, going back to the, to the capital improvement plan, will going ahead and doing this right now will that negate the ability to do some other things and that's where I still probably think Tim's suggestion of looking at that before you make any kind of a decision is a is a good good plan now that doesn't mean that we can't bring this back here over the next several meetings but until we've had a chance to look at that I I would I would like to see us do that um, is there a way so is it ready to go to bid Final plans are not ready. How, how much farther is that going to take? End of the year. So two weeks, week? Yeah, they're close. They're close. How, how much more is it going to cost to finish? We've already paid for that, right? Well, we're already under contract for under that. Contract, we right. have not billed everything out of that contract yet. That contract goes through bidding. <clears throat> how, much, how much more would it take us to get the bids in before we do the CIP so that we actually know the numbers that come through? So we could go to bid in January. Um, just know that once we receive the bids, you have 30 days to either award it or scrap it. Because, you know, to, to follow up with what Justin said, we're, we are just guessing, I guess. So I'm not sure following Tim's line of questioning, you know, unless it's going to cost us a huge amount, I don't know, maybe we should go put it out for bid just so we see what it is and then go back to the CIP. I don't know. Otherwise, we're just kind of guessing. We'd have to move quite a bit to the CIP. Well, we'd have to get the bid first and then the CIP. Right? Special meetings. I don't know. CIP is going to be tough to do in February because i got end of year numbers due, annual reports get together. There's a lot of information that i got to gather for that CIP. That was going to be more April. It would be a, a guess. A guess. An estimate, really, at that time. Sure. I, I think the CIP money's in there at a million four. The trick here is to finish the design with the engineer and get it designed at a million four or less. Um, it's pretty easy to do. I can help you do it if you need help. I've got everything highlighted and marked what I think is possibly over-engineered or, or wasteful. Um, I asked last time about the speed of this, right? And I asked about the timeline, and I found the timeline. Tammy was able to get me the contracts for DGR. And in here, we are at the December 20th council meeting with final plans and specs to be done by December 22nd. So that's the end of this week. Let's be honest, let's give them till the end of the year. And then we've got the bid letting on January 20th, and then potential to award the project February 7th, which was all talked about at the last meeting. Staff was fully aware of this, uh, good job. And then if you award the project, there'd be notice to proceed and start to build April 20 of 22. Uh, 
we've come this far. I don't think we need to quit now. Let's spend the extra 10% to get the final drawings done. So 10% of 87,000 would be about 8,700, Tim. It would be my anticipation to get the plans to 100%. Obviously that can fluctuate a little bit based on hours is how this is designed. You guys approved this on November 1st of 2021. You approved this 87,000 and for this process to start. We can't quit now here December 20th. Uh, let's get the final numbers. Let's get them in under a million four and then we can all talk. The CIP is a, is a mute point. I, I see where you wanna go with it, Tim, but I think we're past that. Um, I wouldn't recommend designing it to 1.4 million and cutting corners. I, I don't think we are. No, I mean, I'm just letting you know, the city of Brandon has done a very wonderful job of cutting corners in the past and we are paying for it now. Right. If the city is going to build yeah. a road project, we are going to build it correctly. Okay. We are not going to cut corners we are going to build it correctly. If that comes in at higher than the budgeted estimate, then that's what it comes in at. But no more cutting corners. It always comes back to haunt the city in the future, and we are paying for it now. So a quick look at the CIP. How much was in the CIP for Redwood, roughly? And what are, where are we going to... Six, six million, that's a moot point right at the moment. We're oh, not doing Redwood. No, I know. So we're not doing it. So do, can we reallocate that money in the CIP come April, or where does that go? That was all going to be borrowed money. Okay. There, we, didn't that's, have, well, we didn't have that money. Uh, fair enough. I asked. I thought it was worth asking. Well, again, and I don't disagree with you, Justin, and I appreciate your comments. And yeah. uh, um, Brian, I, I guess I'd like some direction from you on, on this. I mean, I hate to stop. I don't think anyone is suggesting that we stop the process. I just just try to be careful that we don't do one thing and take it from another thing. That's my only concern. Yeah, we don't, we don't we're not stopping. No. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that, that the council could do. Um, at some point in the future, we're going to need some direction as to which option the council kind of is favoring, whether it's the original one all, through, all the way through option three. We could certainly, I could, I could reach out to some appraisers if, if that would maybe help set your minds at ease, see if they'd be willing to come in and, and it's pretty easy to do an appraisal now, but it's in a, it's, it's the you know, estimated I, appraisal after the improvement that might get a little tricky, but I can certainly reach out to some and see if they'd be interested, number one, in doing it. Oh, I have a question, Brian. So these plans that GG, or DGR are doing, it's not like they have a shelf life, right? No. I mean, the road's gonna be the road. Obviously we know the cost might adjust, right. but whether we get these plans and they get to us or not, it's not like, oh, we got to... It, it doesn't matter if we do the plans in the next couple of weeks or if we wait six months to do them. The plans are going to be the plans. And, then what, what and those, the shelf life on those plans are going to be good. If you don't want to bid it until 10 years from now, I don't see those plans changing. It's still going to be a turn lane. It's still going to be sidewalks. It's going to be sewer and water installed, et cetera. It's, so, it, it, let me ask one quick other question. It, it, it seems like, I mean, I, first of all, I appreciate your comments about not designing a project to a number, design it the way it should be designed. That that's, that's, makes a lot of sense to me. But it sounds like we're, we're quite a ways along already mm -hmm. in this process. So at this point, I think you're recommending that we at least get through the bid letting and see where we're at. Well, we can, we can certainly get, you know, we delayed or I delayed the, the final plans until we kind of get a little further and get a little direction as to assessment costs. We can get those, I shouldn't say we, DGR can probably get those plans done relatively quickly. At that point in time, I think their cost estimate is fairly valid right at the moment, although we're starting to see bids um, between 11 and 18% higher than engineers estimates the last two bid projects. So they're, they're substantially higher than what we've seen in the past. So we'll talk about that at the next meeting, just to give you fair warning. Um, so we could do the plans, and then when, when the plans are done, we could say, hey, we'll, we'll bid it in January, February, March, anytime. Those, once those plans are done, they're done. So the, at some point in time, the road is going to get constructed, whether it's now or <coughs> five years from now. We can do those plans. So obviously, Brian, I think we get better cost estimates in January than we do 
April, right? So these guys fill up their pipeline starting after the holidays. Once they know they've got some big jobs secured, once you start bidding stuff in April, May, the price goes up because guys have their workload determined for the year. Uh, so you gotta be careful with that too. Thank so you. Yeah. On to that, onto that note, that's a good point when we're looking at really large projects. This is a smaller project and some of those contractors are gonna see this more as kind of their filler work. So they're gonna be chasing those big projects so it might not be terrible to bid this later either. Fair this point. This one can go both sides. Yep. Once again, if, you, if we do the plans, even if we bid it, regardless of when you bid it, if you don't like the numbers, you throw the right. bids out and rebid it at a later date. Sure. So, so all, all I'm asking is finish the plans. That's sure. that's right. my deal here. Thank you, Jess. Well, again, I, I guess it's up to, I mean, I'm not quite as worried about the assessments. I mean, in my eyes, it would be difficult for Drexler, Stark, uh, the homes that are already there, I don't know. I mean, even if we didn't assess them, this isn't going to make or break the cost of this project. So I'm, I guess I'm. That to me can be determined at a later time. I think. Well, I think we I, need to move forward think, with this. I think the council should be cautious when you are constructing a new road, just like we've talked about before. When someone buys a parcel in a new subdivision, they're paying that road cost, that right. infrastructure cost. It would it would be a precedent to set the city would build a road and not pass those costs on to the benefited property owners in some fashion. Right. That's so what, I what guess that what I'm saying. Is, right. is always the catching point in special assessment projects. Right. But if you don't special assess that, then what incentive does any developer have to build a road? Sure. You just come to the city and have the city build the road for you. Did anybody no. ever ask what we'd be willing to pay? No. But to be clear, uh, to be, to be clear on this, now if we went with, say we went with option two or option three, the numbers that are, are on there for these properties are not, they're not set in concrete at that point. Um, we would go through the, the next process of the assessment, my understanding, and, and we would say. So you guys approved that on November 1st is the Ironwood Improvement Project final design proposal. And that was my whole point at the December 6th meeting is how did we get this far this quick, right? And all that is in that packet from the council meeting November 1st. And it's the timeline from, the, from there. And so in there, we're gonna get to where you, it's called the assessment role, the preliminary assessment role. Is that correct, Brian? But we can't get the preliminary assessment role without sending this out to bid. Once we get the preliminary, preliminary assessment role, there'll be a meeting. We can all come and say, here, has anyone asked me what I'm willing to pay? Here's what I'm willing to pay, 10 cents on the dollar. Will you agree with me? You guys are now the, the board, the committee. Then maybe I don't like what you say that night. I have one more opportunity, right? Because there'd be a final assessment role that and then I'd say, hey, wait, wait, remember last time I told you I didn't like the number? Can you work with me this time? So that all happens before February 7th. Is that right, Brian? Or around then? Around the bid letting? Around the awarding? When does yeah, the, the assessment, assessment rolls hit? Role, final assessment roll isn't developed until the bids are in. That's the last question. I couldn't fill in the rest of the puzzle on that piece. So anyway, again, I haven't had much time to work on this, but... appreciate that the homeowners might be willing to pay something your job though is to decide what the special benefit is you can set that you can certainly after you set the special benefit this property receives a special benefit of thirty thousand dollars whatever the case may be you certainly can have discussions with the homeowners to say you know this is what we think it is um, are you willing to pay that over the course of XYZ time you know, that is something you can work on so you don't have a court trial. But I, while I appreciate there might be some amount that they're willing to pay, that's not really one of the considerations when you say, what is a special benefit to this property of what they're willing to pay? So you, I, I don't mind having some discussion about what they're willing to pay, but that's really not one of the considerations of what the special benefit is to that property. So. Um, it shouldn't be a factor in setting the amount. Certainly, can be a factor in trying to have an agreement worked out with everybody in the end. But I just want to caution you sure. on that. 
but I, I appreciate, Troy, that you are willing to pay something. I just want to make sure we do this correctly according to the law. Thank you. So what you're saying is you would like us to approve an option, and then from there, the negotiations can happen afterwards? Well, yeah, I'd like you to, it doesn't, I don't, an amount, because you can say option one, two, three, or four. You can say, certainly say, you know what, we think um, this house receives a smaller special benefit because that's never going to be developed. So we have all these options on here, but it's for the council to say in the end, lot number one receives a special benefit of A, lot two B, and, and have some considerations of how you're making that. So I don't want you to just pick an option and say it's going to be this because I think you're going to have to use some discretion on if that amount within whatever option as a starting point is appropriate. The, the options that are just how much of the park <coughs> and the property are to be considered. And the reason we want to have some methodology for the park property to be considered is because in the future, if you come up with another special assessment project that doesn't have a park property on it, you've got to justify why the city absorbed a higher cost on Ironwood sure. than you did on the next street if there's no city property involved with it. In this instance, it just matter how much of the park do you want to include in the assessment process. I, I, I go for option three because we keep talking this whole why, why we have to build this road is because of the park. So I think it only makes sense that it should be option three where the whole park is assessed. We're not deciding tonight what option. You don't, you don't have to. No. Oh, um, I thought we had. I thought it, just wanted to know. At, at some point in the very, very near future, right. either tonight or maybe right. at the next meeting, we would we would like some direction. Okay. To, do, do. Yeah, we're not deciding this. Does that have to be in a today. form of a motion? Yeah, we're not. We're not. A, we're not looking at the number. The assessments aren't being decided tonight. No, I thought it's just what to methods. Oh. Yes. What okay. methods? Do you want to make a motion? Ken? Is that we're just, we're just telling you what yeah, you option? Can. Right. Make it, make yes, it as a that, motion. Make a motion that I, I say option three, where the whole park yep. is being assessed. So proceed, proceed utilizing option three, including the entire Aspen Park property. Yes. Okay. Second. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to proceed with the project using option three. Recognizing that these numbers are not set in stone by any means. Okay. Just the option. Any so, other questions? So to clarify, by approving option three, then we're asking the engineer to finish the plans and send this out to bid, right? We're going to finish the plans, including option three, to include the whole park, and then we're going to send this out to bid and have another meeting. We will. I will authorize the the engineer to finalize the plans. Right. Okay. I just want to be clear that we're all voting on here tonight, or you know, and that there is another meeting to fight the numbers or to look well, at be better numbers. There'll be a couple more. Uh, right. 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 So we're on track. Let's stay on track. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. You're you're more than welcome to show up at more meetings on Monday nights. How's that? Uh, this is warming out. I, I have a little time to work on this. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. We, uh, Jim? Yes, uh, yes, Jack. Jim, this, yeah. Um, I've been quiet and just listening and taking it all in here. I have a number of comments. Um, I, for one, do believe that we need to move forward with this, and I, I think by finalizing plans and, and getting bids back that we can review and decide what to do with them is a good plan. Um, I don't feel that this can be split um, well proportionately amongst six landowners plus the city. The city, obviously, we have the most to gain from this. And secondly, the uh, people that are doing development, development, develop, have development are also uh, benefiting. And that, in, that to me includes Coughlin, Peterson, and Oakland. Um, I know there's a couple spots that need to be, uh, let's say, fixed that uh, proposed new intersections. 
section of Peterson's land. Um, from what near as I can tell from the, the plan, that is proposed to go all the way up into Oakland's uh, Twin Rivers development. Uh, Dustin, uh, that does, does, does definitely benefit you. Um, if I was living up there, I wouldn't want to have only one access uh, and, and going out to the north with everybody else. So I think that is definitely uh, something that needs to be resolved. Uh, you're 55 foot right away. I think there's, uh, you need to figure out what to do with that. It's obviously not just a house. That could also be a street if you could just get uh, the additional property. Um, get that for me, Jack. I'll take it. <clears throat> Pardon me? Get that land for me. I'll take it. I've been well, trying for five years. Need, well, I think you need to own, own your uh, negotiating skills. Then. <laughs> That's just off the record. Um, um, and so I, I did have a question, Brian. When you said you included all the parks, is that the entire park, all the tall fields? Yep. Op pool, option three uh, includes. All the way down to the north entrance? Yep. Option so three includes. That that's all included on option three. The entire part, their entire square footage of the park is included. Okay. Yep. Which obviously includes the uh, new south area, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, other questions, Jack? Go ahead. Do you have any other questions? Otherwise, uh, no, no, I'm good. Okay, thank you. I just want to clarify. Sorry. So we're we're voting for option three, mm -hmm. so we can finalize the plans. Is it a done deal? It's going to bid, or is it just finalizing plans? At the next meeting, I'll have a list of all the projects and their bid dates. I'll oh, put it nice. on there, so then. That would be the formal yeah. approval. Okay. And even if we do go to bid, if it comes by, uh, back like, whoa, we can say, Correct. nope. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We, we would just reject the bids and rebid at a later date. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to uh, move to option three, move forward with the process. I assume we want to do a roll call vote on this. You don't have to. Don't have to. It's That's fine. All right. I don't know that we have to. All those in favor of proceeding with those those two items, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Are you opposed or are you slow on your aye, Jack? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an aye. Okay. <laughs> I assumed you were, I just, we had a little delayed electronic technolo technology lapse. So, is that fairly clear? Thank you. Thank you. Next, standing committee reports, we have a wage adjustment for Carrie Thill. Motion and a second to approve the wage increase for carry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bank stabilization project change order number two. This is the final change order that balances out the quantities. And with this one, we reduce the contract amount by 13200 but we also add 33 days to Guys, their working days. Guys, can we take the conversations outside, please, if you have otherwise... It's hard to hear. Thank you. Go ahead, Tammy. Yeah, so it just decreases the contract amount by 13200 but then it also does add the 33 days for uh, working days. Motion to a motion and a second to uh, for the change order. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Yes, I did. 
Again, it's it's sort of delayed. Jack, were you in favor of approval of the change order? Yes. Of course, yes. yes, I am. Okay. We'll take our time. Yeah, I'll slow down mine. <laughs> Item three, bank stabilization project pay application find number five and the final. So this is the final pay application for sixty-seven thousand one thirty-five seventy-seven. We have a motion and a second to approve the bank stabilization project. Pay application number five and final. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor of the pay applications signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Way to go, Jack. You got right in with them. Well, Moving on to Parks and Rec, the work report is there. Uh, purchase of a field groomer for the softball diamonds. Uh, Parks Department has recommended the purchase of a turf war of Smithco infield groomer from Turf Works in the amount of twenty five thousand eight hundred fifty eight dollars and twenty cents. That looks good. Yeah, motion to approve. It's in our budget. Second. A motion and a second to approve the. Um, Purchase of a field groomer. Any questions, comments? We do. <laughs> Ours are blue. Those things are, those groomers are something else. I mean, are we going to get it painted blue for the city? Do have stencils and stuff on there for us? <laughs> there we go. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All those in favor of the Purchase of the field groomers signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have a several items that uh, need to be declared as surplus. I believe three benches, some chairs, tables. Motion, second. Motion a second to declare surplus property. All in favor? $500. It's below $500. Jack, did you hear that? It's below 500 so. Uh, any other? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll bid 9 cents on that back. <laughs> it's yours. Yeah. We will drop it off Monday. Can you have it off Monday? Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? All those in favor of declaring the surplus property, say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution, resolution 3321 setting pool fees. Uh, the only change here is adding non-refundable to the season pass area. We've taken this approach. Um, it just wasn't on the resolution for some reason and it's been on our summer rec flyer. So it's just really adding that language in there just so it's, it's noted. Uh, no changes to the actual fees. So moved. Motion and a second on the setting of the pool fees. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 3421, setting park shelter fees. Uh, this is just changing, so we have a daily rate. Um, we don't have a lot that would do like a full day or seven hours or more, um, but when we switched over to the new software system, we just added that in there. So it would be an hourly, hourly rate, under seven hours, and then an all-day fee if it's seven hours or more. So the, a motion and a second to approve the um, park shelter fees. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aspen Park Project Change Order Number 3. This is the final change order for the Aspen Park project. Um, this one reduces the contract amount by $10,169.58. Very good. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the Aspen Park project change order, lowering it $10,000. Any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aspen Park project pay application number three the final final pay application for thirty six thousand nine hundred and ninety three dollars and twenty four cents motion to approve second a motion and a second to approve the final aspen park project 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public Safety 2022 Fire Contract. Can I add one oh, thing really sorry. quick? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get it on the agenda. I'm, I have a, a new employee who started back in September that I haven't gotten around to introducing. So I just wanted to introduce Nick Gunderman. Ah. Uh, he's Welcome. been with us since then and doing a good job. So. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. We asked for a five-minute speech. <laughs> <laughs> After you sat for an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. Well, Welcome. Okay, 2022 fire contract. Uh, this is the contract for 2022 for with the Brandon Fire Department for services. The budgeted amounts are included in there in uh, red. Uh, operations and maintenance, 113,757, and then capital equipment of 141,603. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the fire contract with the changes in red noted on page 99. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, wage adjustment for Mr. Palmer. He only shows up when he's on the agenda. I will second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the wage adjustment. <laughs> Any discussion? Yeah, maybe we should just. <laughs> You'll never come to another meeting, will you? I have no choice. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item three is the ICC code adoption. I know this is the item you've all been waiting oh, for. Yeah. <laughs> Included in there is uh, Ordinance 653, which adopts the 2021 International Building Code, International Existing Building Code, International Building Code with Amendments, the Property Maintenance Code, and International Pool and Spa Code. Um, and all of the amendments that are approved by Sioux Falls, as, you, as we talked about, um, so the, the ICC is adopted every three years, four years? Uh, Sioux Falls goes through it for a year, makes their amendments, and then we just piggyback on to what Sioux Falls does. So we're always a year behind on adopting the code. Um, and also included in there, it was asked at the briefing meeting if uh, the building department could provide a summary of significant changes. That was included in the, in the pamphlets or books that uh, the building department received. So those were included as well. Um, any significant changes. If you noticed, uh, I think they're addressing shipping containers and what was the other one that I saw? Oil. Yeah, oil derricks. So, um, Paul Clark is here if you have any questions on, on the ICC or significant changes to any of the codes. I was... Paul, Brian, <coughs> did, we, uh, did we come up with a uh, uh, worksheet of the changes? Significant changes, I should say. Yeah, actually, the ICC included uh, a summary of significant changes for both the ICC and the existing building, existing housing code. Uh, they were in the packets uh, starting on page 188. Uh, give me a second to get up there. Yeah, the Jack, it's Justin here. Can you hear me? So I just would like to add a few things to this. Um, the city of Sioux Falls, like Brian said, has adopted this uh, or will adopt this soon. They every year, every three years, put together a mandatory one hour continuing education class for everyone who's licensed in Sioux Falls. I've been to the class, it was very informative. Um, I think it answered all your questions, Jack. But with that, one of their, there's not many changes, Jack. There's nothing to be concerned about, so hopefully that puts you at ease. Uh, one of the big changes is, or a lot of the changes are electrical. And so one of the issues we're having right now is Brandon is serviced by the state electrical inspector. They are currently so short staffed, they have halted all final inspections. So they will grant you a rough in inspection and then go ahead and move in. We'll put you on a list and we'll come check your final when we get to it. Um, it may be time to start looking at a, a Brandon city electrical inspector. Just Mate, more payroll, um, you know, more expenses. I just thought you'd like that, Jack. Yeah, of course. 
So anyway, there's no major changes, nothing to be concerned about, Jack. Uh, myself as a builder, I'm happy with the new code. I think Paul, again, uh, or just for the record, Paul does a very good job too in the city. He's very responsive. Um, nothing but good things to say about Paul. Okay, are there any questions? I, I know it was, it was a, a lot of stuff. I looked through as much of it as I could make sense of. I'm certainly not a builder. But, uh, Didn't we have a distillery in town that have to sprinkle? It's, I'm sorry? No. If we have a distillery in town, it has to be sprinkled. Well, that is good to know. Oh, Go ahead. With, if you're familiar with ISO, Brian did a great job for me. I, I could have stayed at home tonight, but anyway, um, so the ISO um, is an insurance services organization. They come and rate cities, and every five years they come. And one of the first questions they ask are, what, what building code are you under? If you're under a code that's not currently on the national code, then they're going to mark you down and that will affect homeowners rates and commercial owners rates for insurance. So we always want to be up to speed. And, and, and the codes, you know, just as um, uh, Justin said, uh, it, it's t technology changes, um, building code, architects, there's a lot of input around the country and stuff, but we want to stay right with, the, with, with where everybody else is. So um, the, only, the only one we're going to hold off was in the plumbing, because at the state level, um, the State Plumbing Commission has not decided which code they're going to go with at this point. So everybody's in a holding pattern, but all the rest of them will move forward, and we would adopt theirs. Uh, just a month after Sioux Falls, so two, 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 two. So, okay. thank you, Paul. Yes, ma'am. A motion and a second to approve the ICC code adoption. Any other questions? Thank you, Paul. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs> I think that was four. Yeah. Uh, Moving on to administrative reports, uh, we have a termination, Brian? Correct. With the hiring of the full-time assistant finance officer, we will let the part-time office assistant go at the end of the year. Okay. Yep. a motion and a second to eliminate the assistant office position. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 3521 contingency transfer. So we build in a contingency every year into the budget and then from time to time we'll transfer those into whatever line item is needed. Right now we're looking at legal. Um, we've had some increase in legal fees due largely in part to annexation and some cannabis. I should say some cannabis, a lot of cannabis. <laughs> yes. Um, insurance, we've seen an increase in construction projects as uh, we've increased the construction projects. Um, our insurance increases and then the inspection department just um, and a change in an, an employee plan so there's no um, the condition is built into the budget so there's no financial considerations just moving that money okay a motion and a second to approve the movement of the contingency monies any other questions all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 3621, setting fees for Safety Town program. One thing I want to bring up is, Christina, you weren't here, but Barb and Dana asked about it being non-refundable. And I'm like, that's probably more, because that's more work on you, right? Like, if someone decides to cancel last minute, and then you have to try to refund it. I mean, what do you think? The reason why we kind of put this in last year was free. It was our first year doing it. This, but after having several drop out, we thought to help yeah. kind of, because each kid gets a t-shirt and stuff like that to kind of help 
offset the cost of that and just making I'm you guys know I made way, a lot of copies too. Um, you can set a, a deadline like a week before it's non-refundable um, for swimming lessons. We don't. Um, or you know, yeah, you can substitute somebody in there. I, I'm good either way. Um, I'm fine matter. with whatever. They, they just made brought up a good point. I'm like, oh yeah, if I don't want to create more work for you. You, you know, we don't. Uh, the summer rec program is non-refundable, correct? Summer rec, there's no charge. There's no charge. Yeah. Um, to make it consistent, you could. I would do what you did. A motion to pass resolution thirty-six twenty-one with a non-refundable twenty-dollar fee. Okay. I make a motion to pass with the non-refundable fee added to it. Just yep. we can add that in. Motion and a second to pass the resolution setting the safety town fee with a non-refundable clause. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, recipient subs recipient agreement with CCOG for MPO activities. Uh, the MPO will reimburse twenty five up to twenty five thousand dollars of the city engineer's wages for planning work that is performed for MPO, MPO functions. A motion and a second to approve the agreement with CCOG. Any other questions, comments? Um, thanks, Tammy, for saving us some money. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Brian, we have a raising nation. Yep, Dennis Olson, who's been our part-time uh, economic development director, has submitted his resignation effective December 31st. Uh, we'll meet with, or we've met with representatives from the Brandon Bellman Foundation to uh, work through how we're going to coordinate with them. We need to at least acknowledge yep, all of the to, service that yep. Dennis has given to this community. It's been, uh, we've been very fortunate. I have a motion and a second to approve uh, the resignation for Mr. Olson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, work report on streets. We have a new employee. Yes. Uh, Michael Dornkamper uh, in the Public Works Department at a starting wage of 19.07 an hour starting January 3rd or 4th. We'll do a group I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to approve the hiring. Um, any other questions in the budget? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Rushmore Project pay application number eight. Um, they are finished with construction for the year, so they'll pick up next spring and do some of those small items like seating and replacing cracked sidewalk. Um, a couple of things that they still have to do yet this year are things like adding the generator to the lift station. So there'll still be some work going on out there, but overall construction is complete. Looks really nice. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the Rushmore Pay Project application number eight. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Rushmore Area Phase 2 Final Design Proposal for from DGR. So if you remember, we're doing core and Rushmore Area opposite of each other. So this year's construction in core area, which means it's design in Rushmore Area. So that would be that Phase 2 for Kirkwood and then the rest of Yellowstone and Cedar. And that amount is two hundred forty-one thousand two hundred eighty-four dollars. Is there just two phases in Rushmore? No, there's four. Oh, and there's mm-hmm. Silver took like seven. Silver took ten. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the phase two final design. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Core area overlay project design proposal from DGR. This last summer we did the overlay project on 4th Avenue. 
which seemed to turn out really well. So I'd like to propose that we do that for fifth and sixth. Um, in the packet, there are those side streets shown in there. I want to do a little bit more investigating on that, on if we really should be overlaying some of that as the street right now acts as our storm sewer and we don't want to take away all the capacity of the street. Um, I, I realize that it is pretty rough right now, but this is just a band-aid fix until we can get there with the rest of the core projects. Are you talking about Cedar? Yeah. Are we going to... Um, are we going to also send a, a letter like we did last time, just telling them that we realize this is a Band-Aid fix, but it... Yes. I, I do. I drove down. I thought it was a little bit nicer, though, what they had, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I it's know a lot it's not nicer. perfect, but... It's a lot nicer. Just know it's not going to last very long. Right. But at right. least it's... Yeah. Something smoother. to get them by. It's smoother. Yeah. For now. Second. A motion and a second to approve the core area overlay project design. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Joint repair project. Um, this is pro one project that didn't get 100% completed this last year. Um, they did probably about two-thirds of Holly Boulevard, and then they quit due to school starting. So next year they'll pick it up in the spring when school is out, and then they still have the portion on Aspen Boulevard to do as well. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second to approve the pay application. Is this in the amount of 206? Yes, in the amount of 206, 473, right. and 70 cents. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Hey, Mayor. Hey, Raleigh. Thank you to your guys for coming down our streets again and taking out the mogul path I had in my on Hackberry. It was awesome. I appreciate it. I would second that for like all of them. My husband was home. He's like, it's awesome. The cities are out here. I mean, when it got really slushy there before that. So thank you for doing that. Whoever, was, yeah, that was yeah, really that's, nice. That's always a question that Raleigh and I talk about is replowing. Yeah. Because unfortunately, you do push that into people's driveways again, and it does create some issues from time to time. But it was with the rain coming. Yeah. We thought it was very prudent to get out there and and get that stuff off. I'm glad you did. Me too. I'm get those bad reps and those yeah. And rewash all the stuff in the driveway. Yeah. Okay, moving on uh, to water and sewer wage adjustment for Dustin Wagner. Dustin's a worker in our maintenance department, uh, making a step movement to 2071 an hour. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve the wage adjustment for Dean Dustin Wagner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Water tower. Pay application number seven. This is the yeah seventh uh, pay application for the water tower. It looks like there's not much work going on out there at this site, but they are still fabricating the bowl, and they'll probably be delivering that in probably mid-February. Um, they continue doing their utility work in the golf course parking lot, and then they're still working on the booster station along Redwood, too. So they're doing plenty of construction on that project yet. Second. I have a motion and a second on the water tower pay application. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. ARPA funding. Is everybody ready to be confused? Mm -hmm. As we've talked about from time to time, uh, the state is anticipating receiving about 600 million in ARPA funds. Very similar guidelines uh, from the original ARPA funds a year ago. Uh, they can be s the easiest place to put them is for sewer and water improvements. The funds have to be expended by 2026. Uh, our allocation of that 600 million might be around 10 million, 9.9 .9 to 10 million. Um, at this point in time, we've got a January 1. Um, application deadline for a project. We've asked CCOG to submit that application for the water treatment plant, which is a one-time, pretty easy project to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the restriction is that we can use ARPA funds to fund 30% of the project. So depending on when we get the bids in, if the council wants to just uh, 
renovate the plant or expand the capacity of the plant, or if you want to include the RO portion, it would be a third of whatever that cost is. Uh, any funds that we don't use out of our allocation on the, on the water treatment plant could be used towards the core project or the Rushmore projects or the west side tour trunk or the east side trunk. So if, what, what we looked at was if we don't use the funds on the water treatment plant, we probably won't be able to use all of our allocation because of that 30% project restriction. Uh, we sure So if with that, I have a question. If we do, like you said, there's a possibility then if we could use, get the RO option, mm -hmm. then that would even bring, I mean, I know that's a concern with the cost to the residents, but if we are able to get that money, then that cost necessarily that associated with RO wouldn't have to be passed on. Correct. Um, right, to the residents? Depending on if you want the RO treatment or not, uh, if, if we just expand the plant, not including the RO treatment, our estimated ARPA f funding would be about $4.2 million. If we included the RO portion, we would be eligible for about $6.6 .6 million. So it would bring down the, if you use ARPA funding, it would bring down the bond, which would reduce the surcharge to the residents. Correct. I think that was the big, I guess it's been a while since talked about yep. this, but wasn't that with the RO, is that it was a lot more to the residents and Correct. was it worth it, but now if we get money and it's not going to be Yeah, increased. we'd be looking at, I think, the last cost estimate. If we just did the plant expansion, it was about 14 or 15 million, if I remember right. And if we included the RO, it'd be about 20 to 21 million. So either way, it's, it, it will bring down that surcharge, and that's yeah, how we'll pay for that uh, significantly. And this, like I said, if we don't use the ARPA funding here, highly unlikely that we can spend it all by 2026. Because because can't cash flow because we certainly have the projects for it. We've got the projects. It's it's about debt capacity. We don't, we don't have the debt capacity to borrow enough money to get our allocation. And since the water treatment plant is a surcharge, or we're planning to do a surcharge, it doesn't go against our debt sur or our debt capacity. So we're good. Okay. So Brian, this is Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. As I understand what you're saying there. Increase the surcharge no, on the if, if there would there would be an increase in the surcharge um, if the RO was added with the ARPA funds it just won't be as much. Yeah, let's bring it down. Yeah, it, you know, looking looking. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. Right now, cost est latest cost estimate I saw on construction costs were about fourteen million. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Fourteen. <laughs> 14 million for just upgrading the plant. And we would be eligible for about 4.4 million um, in ARPA funds for that. If you include the RO, which is another 7.6 million in construction costs, you're looking at 21.8. So the ARPA allocation would be 6.6. .6. So it's, it would still, the surcharge will still increase with the RO, but not as much if we didn't use the ARPA funds. Oh, they huge. Can you tell me how much it Increase for haven't haven't looked at that yet. We can certainly get some cost okay. estimates or some some estimates to you. Didn't plan on looking at until we actually get the, the bids. Yeah, right, you know, right. Bid so it's just saying that we have. This a is just really. Do uh, you want to authorize the mayor to sign the documents for the application for the water yeah. treatment plant? That's what we need yeah. tonight. Yeah. You need a motion. Yes. Yes. I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion and a second to approve the application for the ARPA funding. Any other questions anyone has? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We do need executive session to discuss uh, litigation, potential litigation. So, so we'll move into motion. Motion to go in. Second. Have a motion and a second from Barb. Go in. All in favor say aye. 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 